One of the most annoying parts about working with simulations is that it takes forever to do anything. You bake in a simulation, you create a material and render it out and then you realize your simulation looks like crap and you wasted about 5 hours doing that. Now you have to restart the entire thing and do it all from scratch. And if you try to play the simulation in the viewport, the frame rate is way too slow and it drops down to like 1 FPS and you can't tell if the simulation looks good. What if there was a way to view your animation in real time without having to render it out? The solution is Viewport Render Animation. This option allows you to render the viewport as an animation. How this works is it's basically the same process of creating a regular animation. You first have to set an output and then choose a file format and then click render. For this, I would probably set it to an MP4 because I don't really see the need to render this as an image sequence because it's just going to go pretty fast and there's not really a need to do that. And this renders off of your view and not the camera. So wherever you are looking, that is going to be what's rendered out. If you go into the camera view, then you have a frame at what it's going to render. I like using the camera because it's a little bit easier to tell what's going to be rendered out. And you have all of the options like the focal length and the other settings to play around with. Once you have found your position of the camera, all you have to do is go over to view and then select viewport render animation. This will bring up a new rendered window and you'll be able to see what frame it's rendering currently. When it's done rendering, the file will be in the folder that you specified in the output panel. Now let's go over the other two options. Viewport rendered image will render out a single image of your viewport. This is basically just taking a screenshot. The other option is view rendered keyframes. This one's a little bit different and it's kind of weird of how it works, but it's only going to render out the keyframes of the animation. For example, if you have a cube that moves across the screen on frame 10, it goes about this length and then frame 20 it goes here and then frame 30 it goes here. It's going to render out the animation to frame 10 and then it's going to duplicate that frame all the way to 19. Then on frame 20, it's going to update and the cube will be in this position. So it's not going to render any of the frames in between 10 and 20. It's only going to render out the frames which have the keyframes. So that is how the view render keyframe works. It's only going to render out the frames which have keyframes applied to them. Now real quick, I'm going to show you how you can make your simulation look good in the viewport and then you can create a really cool animation. So let's jump into Blender real quick and I'll show you how to do that. Alright, here we are in Blender and I'm going to go through some settings that you can change in your viewport to really make your viewport render animations look really good. Here's our simulation so far and as you can see it does look pretty good. The first thing that you're going to want to do though when you render out a viewport is you want to press Z and toggle overlays. That'll get rid of all of the outlines. If you press Z and you don't have the toggle overlays option, that's because you need to enable it in your preferences. Go over to edit down to your preferences and then underneath the key map tab, make sure extra shading pie menu items is turned on. This will allow you to have the toggle overlays, but it will also allow you to have the toggle x-ray. So make sure that is enabled and then you'll be able to click on toggle overlays and then everything will disappear. You also probably want to hide your flow object. So over in the outliner, just hide it right there and you can see it disappears. If you have any curves or any other objects like these, you can also hide those as well just to make sure everything is gone except for the fire itself. You can scroll down in the domain settings over to the viewport display. You can bring up the thickness of the fire so you can see the smoke a bit more. If we bring it up to 5, you can really see it starts to look pretty cool. But keep in mind, if you bring this up higher, you're going to also notice the adaptive domain cuts off a lot of the smoke. So make sure you don't go too high or it's going to really be noticeable when the smoke gets cut off. So I'm just going to leave it at a value of 1. If you want to see the other attributes for your smoke, you can also open up the grid display and turn this on and it'll change your smoke over to this black color. From here, you can drag up the color ramp and you can get more white in the scene. And then you can also change the scale of the color ramp. If we go up to a value of 15 or so, here is what this looks like. And this can also be a really cool simulation so you can see exactly the different attributes. Like this one is density. There's also flame, which will give this effect and heat and the other options that you can play around with. I'm just going to leave that off because I want to see the fire itself. And the other thing I'm going to discuss is how to change the background of your viewport. 
You can do this by going to your preferences. Underneath the edit menu, you can select preferences and then go over to your themes tab. Open up the 3D viewport, which is right here. And then you're gonna to want to scroll down all the way down here under theme space, keep scrolling down and then underneath the gradient colors. Here is the background of your uh, 3D viewport. You can see here, if I drag this down to black, it has this vignette effect. And that's because the background type is set to vignette. If you change it over to single color, now the entire thing will be the color that you set right here. So I'm gonna bring this down to black just like that. And then we can render this as a viewport animation. So I'll go up to view and then click on viewport render animation. This will bring up a new window and we can see our animation is rendering out and we can see the frame on our cursor right here. Then once it reaches 100, it'll be finished and it'll be placed in the folder that you specified in the output section. So now if we open up that folder, we can see it right here and I can double click on it and we can view our animation in real time. If you want to go back to the original color of your viewport, you can do that easily by going over to your preferences once again, and then going up to the top right here, and then just clicking reset, and then everything will be reset back to the normal colors. And there you go, that is how you view your animation in real time using the viewport render animation. This is very useful and it'll allow you to view your simulation, your animation, whatever you have in Blender in real time without having to render it out. I did not know about this feature until recently and I thought it was really cool so I wanted to share it. Thank you very much for watching and if you found this tutorial helpful let me know in the comments down below and I will see you in the next one.